you realize like, okay, I might go for something and fall. I might fail. I might fall flat on my face. I might be embarrassed. And that might shake my self-confidence a little bit, but it cannot touch my self-worth. Patrice Washington, and this is the Redefining Wealth Podcast, where authenticity leads to alignment and abundance. Join us each week as we peel back the layers on what wealth truly means and dive into conversations that inspire, connect, and empower you to live your richest life. Get ready to challenge the status quo. It's time to redefine wealth for yourself. You are listening to the Redefining Wealth Podcast with Patrice Washington. This is the space that you come to each and every week to learn more about why we say wealth is not just money and material possessions. While that is very important, there is no wealth building without well-being. And that's because the original 12th century definition of wealth says wealth is the condition of well-being. And so it makes sense that we are having a conversation today about self-worth. And this is for my high achieving folks who think, oh, I have a lot of self-confidence. I love that my girl, Jamie Kern Lima, is here today to talk about the fact that self-confidence is just not the same as self-worth. You can be very accomplished and still have challenges with your self-worth and it manifests in so many different ways. She says, imagine what you do if you fully believed in you when you stop doubting your greatness, build unshakable self-worth and embrace who you are on every level. Just imagine how your life can transform. Jamie Kern Lima is no stranger to the podcast. She has been here before and she's a self-made entrepreneur, a champion of women, philanthropist, keynote speaker, and co-founder of It Cosmetics, a company she started in her living room and sold to L'Oreal for $1.2 billion. She became the first female CEO in L'Oreal's 100 plus year history, and she's now on the Forbes richest self-made women's list. Man, and she's one of the sweetest people I know. Her new book, Worthy, comes out this week. And after you hear this week's affirmation, the next thing you'll hear is my conversation with the one and only Jamie Kern Lima. This week's affirmation is, I am worthy of love just as I am. Finally, I realize my inherent worthiness of love and have made a firm decision to embrace myself wholly and unconditionally. I release any notions of inadequacy or self-doubt, recognizing that I am deserving of love simply by being myself. My uniqueness and flaws make me beautifully human, and I embrace them with compassion and acceptance. I attract love into my life that honors and cherishes me for who I am without judgment or conditions. As I acknowledge my worthiness of love, I radiate love from within and I attract loving relationships and partnerships that enrich my life. Declare with me today, I am worthy of love just as I am. Welcome back to the Redefining Wealth podcast, Jamie. I am so grateful to be here, Patrice. I'm fired up. (laughs) So much to talk about. Thank you so much for having me. Look, there's always so much to talk about. Jamie and I have already talked for 20 minutes before we started (laughs) recording. And now we're actually (laughs) going to do the thing. Friend, I'm so proud of you. I am super excited to jump in to Worthy because as you know, what was it, 2020 or 2021 when you came on to talk about Believe It? Was that 2021 already? Yes, early 2021, Mm -hmm. about three years ago. So it's been three years. Yeah. Yeah. And I was on the mountaintop for Believe It. I love that book, became a New York Times bestseller, and you've just been doing so many things. And I remember you saying back then, like, I don't know if I'll ever write another book. I think I put it all in there. And then I turn around and I think I stumbled upon seeing that you had written another book. I didn't even know. I think I found it on LinkedIn and sent you a screenshot like, what is this? (laughs) What is happening? How did a second book come along? Well, believe it was, um, you know, it was really like my story of, of going from spending my whole life kind of doubting 
I had what it takes or doubting I was enough. And it was sort of my journey of learning to believe I was enough and, you know, telling, telling the real granular story of going from my living room to building, you know, billion dollar business. And it's kind of that, it was kind of my story and worthy is really the playbook on how like you can believe in you. And it's, there's over 20 tools in it. You can apply to your life right now on how to really believe you're enough and transform your life. And the whole principle of this whole book, Patrice, is no matter what area of life we're talking about, whether it's your finances, your health, your 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 relationships, your your goals, your dreams, your career, this whole this whole principle that I, I know to be true is that we don't in life we don't get what we want, we get what we believe we're worthy of. And our self-worth is our ceiling. Our self, we think it's sometimes we think it's, oh, it's our connections or it's our clout or our skills and attributes or how hard we work and all the things, you know, and, and how many times we swipe on the dating app. Like we think it's all these things and those things are important. But no matter how much of those things we, we do, we'll always hit a ceiling at the level of our self-worth of what we think we're worthy of. And so, I've sort of learned that the hard way so many times in my life, including after I thought I had like accomplished so much stuff Mm -hmm. that the world told me I'd be happy (laughs) if I finally got. And I always thought my whole life, oh, if I could just achieve enough and please enough other people and accomplish enough of my goals and dreams, then I'll finally feel happy and fulfilled. And then I finally will feel enough. And I spent decades doing that, realizing, oh, that's great. It's an important part of life, but that's not it. If you don't have really strong self-worth underneath all of it, you can accomplish everything in the world. You could please everyone in the world. You will still always feel like something's missing, like you're not enough. Uh, and, and, and you don't know why. And so for so many of us, we then just work harder and go, okay, I just got to level up to the next level and the next level. And those, again, those things are so important for growth and fulfillment, but they're not, they're literally not what fills your soul if you don't have strong self worth underneath it all. So I became obsessed a couple of years ago with this and just started studying self worth. And yeah, I feel like we're these, the, I know I was just telling you before this that I'm like, I'm, I'm the next 10 years, I'm going to be launching worthy, even though yeah. it's out now, which I'm so excited. It's out right now. Um, <laughs> And, but it's, it's the greatest work of my life. And I'm just, I'm really, really excited to get it out into the world. Oh, I'm excited to support you in getting it out to the world because I read the first half so far and it already resonates with me so much for so many reasons. First of all, I really feel like since I've met you the last three years or so, I have been on a self-love, self-worth journey. And I really feel, I didn't know that that's what it was though, right? Because I believe that sometimes when we are romanticizing where we are in life or we're romanticizing what it would look like or feel like to get to the next level, and I'm not talking about just dreaming, but romanticizing, like when I get there, it's going to be roses and peaches and rainbows and flowers and everything will be beautiful. We spend so much time in that, or at least I did, thinking, okay, next level, next level, next level, that it allowed me to busy myself and be so distracted in different seasons that I didn't realize that what I was experiencing was really a self-worth issue. Like I had no idea that it was about sometimes like doing things because I didn't feel like enough, even in my personal life, but I knew professionally I could show up, I could shine. I know I can crack a mic and move people to action or to transformation, but then personally- You can. (laughs) And then like personally, I wasn't really feeling that. And as I really started to explore and ask myself, I would say better questions, and like, where am I, where am I maybe settling for some things in my life? I realized that I had an issue with self-worth too. Even though I had accomplished all these things and had all these accolades, I did not feel like I was worthy of the best love of my life. And I did settle. I did settle for decades for someone who was not the best for me. And even having to say that, 
and give voice to that, which you talk about like giving voice to truth and how important that is like in the journey of like your self-worth, that's hard because sometimes to to enhance your own self-worth, you recognize it's going to come to the, at the disappointment of other people. And so yes, I think a lot yes. of us kind of stay in that place for that reason. And you know what I want to just honor for a minute is like so few people are aware of what the real ish, the real thing is, the real reason they're in a relationship that's not the best for them or the real reason they're staying stuck and like not going after the thing and not writing the book, not, you know, registering their domain or, or, or the real reason they're hitting a ceiling and going, you know, I really want a, a five figure business, but it's at four figures, or I really want a six figure business. It's at five figures. And they're trying to, they don't understand why am I hitting the ceiling? And I talk about this so much in, in worthy about how we don't sort the level of our goals and dreams, whether that's in relationships our business, our anything. Like we don't soar to the level of our goals and dreams. We always stay stuck at the level of our self-worth. And to just kind of honor and call out something that you just shared and for everybody listening right now, who I think can probably, I mean, most of us, right? You look at the, the data right now, most of us can relate to what you just shared in some way or another in our lives right now because 80% of women don't believe they're enough. 91% of girls and women don't love their bodies. 75% of women deal with imposter syndrome. And it's a real thing. And there's a whole chapter in Worthy about the one thing that she called the one thing that changes everything. And it breaks down the difference between self-confidence, which is so important in our lives. Self-confidence is so important to build, to always win but it breaks down the difference between self-confidence and self-worth. And they're so different. Yeah, break it down. Okay. Yeah, they're so different. And by the way, when we Okay, let me just let me just break it down for a second. So, so I'm going to define the two and I want to talk about why so much of our life we're doing all the things that build self-confidence, thinking that's when we're going to finally feel enough, but none of those things build self-worth. And it becomes this never ending cycle that so many people just keep hustling, keep achieving, keep striving. And all those things are important for growth. But again, you'll never enjoy them while you're doing them. You'll never feel fulfilled no matter what you achieve. If underneath it all, you don't have strong self worth. So self confidence, because we confuse the two. So many of us think they're the same. So self confidence, while it's an internal trait, it is so much based on the external and it fluctuates. It rises and falls. It's volatile. It's fragile. Self-confidence is how we assess our own skills and abilities. It's how much of the world's definition of success we think we have. It's if we're winning or losing. It's how we feel we stack up and measure against other people or compared to other people. It's, it's uh, our willingness to try and go for it. And it's fragile. It fluctuates. They studies show like the, the boxer that wins the match is automatically 30% more confident because they won. It fluctuates. It's just volatile. Self-worth is the deep internal knowing that you are worthy of love and belonging exactly as you are, not as you achieve, not as your past or your past mistakes or your past fail, exactly as you are. And what happens is for so many of us, first of all, we're raised around, you know, if we're blessed enough to be raised around well-intentioned people, they will often ask us for our whole lives, how's work going? How's the kids? How's the, what, what relationship are you in? Like all the things. And, and if we have an answer that makes them happy, then we kind of feel that we're supposed to be happy and that that's our validation that we're enough some, somehow if we have enough of those things. And then we are raised with every advertisement around us just about telling us, oh, once you get that dream car, then you're going to be happy. Once you get the six pack abs, then you're going to be happy. And so, and so for so many of us, we have these ambitions, which are again, really important. There's a, 
the chapter later in the book that is that talks about the ultimate fulfillment equation in life. And it talks about how you always need to, you know, self-confidence and, and growth to always be growing and, and contributing to something bigger than yourself or to be in the service of others. And self-confidence and growth and contribution are all important, but they're all multiplied by your level of self-worth underneath it all to get your your level of fulfillment. And so what happens for so many of us, and maybe maybe someone listening to us right now can relate to this, is we think, okay, I have these big goals, these big dreams. And for some people, it might be like the marriage or the dream house or a certain job title or a certain number in the bank account or a certain status on social media, whatever it is, a certain goal weight. It could be anything. These, these goals and dreams we have, and we think once I finally get that, then it's going to solve all my problems. Then I'm going to finally feel enough. Then I'm going to be happy and fulfilled. And so what we do, and I I believe this my entire life, and I've worked so hard to just break through where kind of the environment I was raised around and want to hit all these milestones as the first in my family and all these things. And I worked so hard. And for a lot of us, we do, we work so hard, whether it's, you know, we have this big goal in mind that we think is going to be the thing. And so some of us spend months or years or decades working so hard. And then for everyone listening, like imagine one of those in your life and then you finally get it. And then what happens? Like, did it solve all your problems and you're now happy and fulfilled forever? For most of us, the answer is no. For most of us, the answer is like, oh, I got the thing. And then I was happy. I was so happy for, you know, a month or a few weeks or a few days. And then before we know it, we're back to feeling like something's missing, like we're not enough. And so what we do is we then go, Oh, I just got to work harder. I got to level up. I got to do the next. I got to, it's that I need more. I need to achieve more. Never ending. Exactly. And this is a never ending cycle for most people their entire life. And what we don't realize is, oh, in the pursuit of all these goals, we've built the self-confidence, which is so important. We've been growing, which is so important. We've often been contributing to other people or serving or pouring into other people. Or, Great, so important. But none of that builds self-worth. And so it's it's why it's this nev- never-ending cycle. And the way that this will show up, Patrice, as well, just to kind of just if anyone's listening to us and they are like trying to identify, well, do I have a self-worth issue? It really shows its way in low self-worth or struggling with self-worth shows up in three main ways in our life most often. If you have pretty low self-worth, you could be accomplishing a lot of stuff, doing a lot of stuff, this, that, whatever, but you will stay low self-worth usually causes you to stay stuck and you don't know why. So you want to get out in the dating world, but you just don't get on the dating app. Or you have registered your domain for your business idea, but you'll find yourself scrolling Instagram eight hours a day. And you're like, why am I not? right? And we think it's, oh, I'm just not a hard worker, or oh, I'm lazy, or I don't have willpower, whatever we think it is. But really what it is, is that we don't believe we're worthy of the thing underneath it all. And so we stay stuck. Medium self-worth looks like you'll go for the thing. You'll go for it. You'll show up. You put yourself out there. You put in the hard work. You do all those things. But then you'll often sabotage it on the way or after you get it. You won't keep that thing for long because underneath you don't think you're you're worthy of it. And then medium to high self-worth looks like you go for the thing. You get it. You're in it but you do not feel fulfilled when you arrived. You feel like something's missing. You feel like you're never enough. Uh, So those are really the three main ways that that they show up. And and they have all shown up in my life for years. And I never never understood it. I just thought I needed to accomplish more or work harder. And listen, working hard is important. All those things are very important for, for overall fulfillment, but they're not the thing that ever makes you feel enough. Right. Oh, there was so many good nuggets. As you were speaking, it made me realize that while I call these last three years like a big self-love journey for me, my real journey was self-worth. I think really being something tangible that I can remember is probably began about six years ago when I 
realized that my relationship with my dad was only based on if I could talk about accomplishments, right? So you kind of mentioned something like that where well-meaning, but how I was raised was essentially that I really talked to my dad when I had something big happen. And it's like, when I was a kid, it was report card time. You know, I got straight A's or now I always got talks too much, Jamie, but I did get straight A's. So I got straight A's. I got into USC. I'm the president of this thing. I'm the captain of that thing. And so I was always striving for achievement because it was how I earned love. That's how I felt I needed to behave in order to get love. Now, in the process, the outside world also applauded and cheered. And that is the thing that I was known for in my family. Well, Patrice is the smart one. She's the smart one. She gets good grades. She's this, she's that. I graduate from college. I start a business during senior year. By 25, it's a seven-figure business. This is what I'm known for. My dad is proud to tell people I own a real estate and mortgage brokerage and they can come see my name on my parking space, right? And they can come see my employees and all the things. And then when I lost everything in the recession, in 2008, 2009, there was a whole period where I didn't feel worthy enough to even speak to my dad. And out of my entire life, that's the season where I really retreated. I isolated myself and I didn't talk much to my family after my wedding in 2007, because I didn't feel like I had anything worthy enough to say. I didn't have an accomplishment to share. And when I really started to heal that, which again was maybe six or seven years ago, I really think that that was the thing that led me to the self-love because I had self-confidence because I had been used to achieving, to your point. But the self-worth was like, I'm worthy of love and adoration and affection with or without an accomplishment. And I remember having a conversation with my dad where I was like, I just want to call you with no agenda, with nothing to say, with nothing to proclaim, with nothing to announce. I just want to be able to call you and say hi. And he was like, you can always do that. But I felt like as, you know, as a teen in my 20s, even in my early 30s, I'm like, If I don't have anything to say, you get off the phone quickly. Like if I don't call with an announcement, right? Not realizing that he was dealing with his own stuff, right? From not having raised his kids hands on. And so I just say that because making that declaration to my dad, once I could do it to him, it really started to create a ripple effect in the other parts of my life where I would just like declare I'm worthy regardless of insert whatever thing I would normally think, right? Even something as simple, Jamie, is going to the grocery store with no makeup. Do you know I used to put on a full face of makeup to run to the store for two minutes? It would take me longer to put on makeup than why I was in the grocery store. And I did that for many, many, many years. And even like recently, I'm like in the airport with no makeup. And I'm like, who are you? Like, look at you. You're such a grown up. Like, this has been such a journey, right? And doesn't it taste like freedom? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is. It is Mm -hmm. beautiful, but it was also the catalyst for shifting the conversation with my dad. And now being at a point where I can call him and just like, hey, dad. And there's, you know, it's, I'm I'm comfortable with the silence. (laughs) I'm comfortable with, I don't have something to announce, but now that I can do that and I've been working on that for several years, I really do think it was the thing that really started the domino effect of how I showed up in business and how I show up in relationship now and how I show up with friends because there's no performance. I'm worthy regardless. Well, you have, I'm curious, how did it also, like, how did it change how you parent? And also, if you don't mind sharing, how did it change? Because you and I had a fun conversation about this recently, but it was off air. So only if you want to share anything, how yeah. did it, how did it impact you, you know, in dating? Yep. I knew you were going to say, Frank, you could get straight to it. Look, Jamie's telling our little slumber party stories. Okay. So first of all, as a parent, it has given me so much freedom with Reagan to allow her to just blossom into who God has called her to be. Do you ever catch yourself saying to her, like, do you ever catch yourself 
of course, celebrating her accomplishments. But then like, do you ever like go, oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a second. I got to make sure I like, like who she is. No, you know what? Because I do both so regularly. So there's definitely just that that balance, if not harmony between the two, because I always celebrate her for just being like I, I always celebrate and acknowledge her for just breathing, existing, being. And I think I don't know about you, but being raised in a Caribbean household, I feel like a lot of I think black listeners in particular will really vibe with me on this. It's kind of the message of you're not special just because you're breathing. Like, you know, you're kind of taught like you got to work twice as hard to be half as good as everybody else out there. So you're really not special just because you're here. Whereas I parent Reagan that you are the apple of God's eye. You are so special literally just because. Now, I do hold her to if I believe that she can do something well, I'm going to, I'm going to advocate for excellence because I want her to see what she can do. But what I'm seeing now that she's a junior, which is so crazy, but now that she's a junior in high school, a lot of her friends, they're putting a lot of pressure on their kids to take a million AP classes and all of the honors and be in all of the programs and only apply to the top schools. And they have to get a 34 or more on the ACT and all this stuff. And I'm like, I just want Reagan to be someplace where she's happy. I personally, I've, I've already gone to college. I'm not trying to live through her and I'm not trying to equate where she goes to college with her worthiness or mine. And being a parent at this stage, that, that's big. Yeah. And and you're breaking a generational cycle. And this is a big thing. And we think that's so many of us because our parents, because their parents, of course, they just want the best. So they're like, what are you accomplishing? Are you going to make it? Are you going to be successful? But it's this never ending cycle. And and I want to call something out really fast for everyone listening, uh, because this is a big thing that we fear. We want the best for our kids. We also want the best for ourselves. And a lot of people fear, oh, if I build worthiness and and in myself and I believe I'm enough exactly as I am, am I going to lose my ambition? Am I going to lose my edge or or will my kids no longer have their ambition? And I just want to say that like when you look at the data, oh my gosh, the more you build your self-worth, the more you believe you are enough exactly as you are, the more ambitious you get because you become fearless of going after the things because you realize like, okay, I might go for something and fall. I might fail. I might fall flat on my face. I might be embarrassed. And that might shake my self-confidence a little bit, but it cannot touch my self-worth underneath it all. And you just become just so much more in pursuit of those things. So I just want to call that out too, because that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a big thing, especially high achievers in their life like you, like me, like me, like so many people listening, you don't lose your edge. You just all of a sudden, when you build that self-worth, you're more fearless when it comes to like the outcome of anything you go for. And also you're actually able to enjoy it. Once you do, you're able to get every, every new thing that you have pursued, you arrive at it and you're able to feel fulfilled in it, not feel like, Oh, I thought, you know, this would make me feel enough and it never does. Um, and, and how has it impacted your your? I knew you were getting back to the dating stuff, but I was <laughs> <laughs> I was also going to say that when you arrive, because it is more authentic, it just feels good versus like you described, you know, earlier, a lot of people have achieved a lot of things that didn't necessarily feel good. They achieved it because they thought, oh, then it'll make me enough. But then when it didn't make them enough, still there was that not enoughness that you talk about in the book, then it's back to the drawing board. And so ambition, when it is linked to authenticity, I think is beautiful. But ambition, when it's linked to just performance and validation, is the thing that leads to burnout. It is the thing that makes, even if you're using the right gift, it doesn't even feel like a gift anymore. Sometimes it can feel like a curse because you think it's going to lead to, you know, all the things and it doesn't. But I think it's that it's just that slight distinction that we have to reframe. And yeah, I feel super ambitious in this season. I feel like I 
am walking into the best season of my life. For all I've accomplished pales in comparison, I feel like, to what I'm about to do or what I'm in the midst of building right now. And that does include my love life. So let's get to it, Jamie Kern Lima. I have a confession to make. My relationship with looking good is so complicated. I don't know if you're anything like me, but I like high quality clothes. I just don't like going shopping and I definitely don't always want to pay high quality prices, if you know what I'm saying. Plus, I don't always want to wear the same stuff over and over again. So I was super excited when I found out about the clothing rental membership armoire because they are making getting dressed stylish, but super easy. When I signed up, I took a five minute style quiz and based on my preferences, they offered suggestions that would best match my lifestyle. I'm filming in a few weeks and I literally just got the cutest blazers delivered to my door in as little as two days. And when I'm ready for new clothes, I can just swap them out for more new to me styles. So whether you're planning your outfit for a date night, packing for a conference, or in need of a gown for some black tie event, you will be the best dressed person in the room and you won't have to feel bad for only wearing something once. Now, What I also love is that Armoire is woman-founded and women-led. They even spotlight women-owned designers on their website, so I know I'm wearing brands that are aligned with my values. I love that I can support a business that's built by women like me. If you're ready to have your dream closet delivered to your door, you might want to try Armoire. I promise you will never be without the perfect outfit for any occasion ever again. And right now, Redefining Wealth listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash wealth. That is armoire.style, A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash wealth to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try armoire today. I don't know about you, but when I do get the bug to get my hands a little dirty in the kitchen, I'm still not inspired to spend lots of time and energy on searching for recipes or walking through a freezing grocery store. Just not my thing. So I get quick, convenient recipes delivered right to me. I just choose my meals and select a delivery day and HelloFresh handles the meal planning and shopping. All I have to do is open the weekly box of pre-portioned farm fresh ingredients with the step-by-step recipes that do have pictures to get cooking with less hassle and less wasted food. And let me tell you, if you're a pescatarian like me, I love that when they say pescatarian, it's not just salmon over and over again. No shade to salmon, but come on, you guys. At this point, I've tried Parmesan crusted trout, Baja fish tacos. I even had pan seared scallops with lemon butter. Oh my gosh, so good. Whatever your dietary preference is, if your goal this year is to save money, eat better, stress less, or just try something new, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, has got your back. Go to HelloFresh.com slash RWFree and use my code RWFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash RWFree with the code RWFree. What I really love about the Redefining Wealth podcast and community is introducing you to my good girlfriends and the amazing resources they put me onto. So you know my good friend, Lacey Green. She's been on the podcast, but millions know her as the curvy girl trainer. She introduced me to Rika last year, and now they are hands down my new favorite athletic shoe brand. I'm literally obsessed with them and can't stop wearing them. Now, what makes Rika shoes so special is their game-changing made-for-women fit. They're designed for a woman's unique foot shape and how our bodies move. Now, you know, I've been on my Fit Pillar game for a long time, and I can tell you they really feel different than any other sneaker you will find out there, no matter what you're into. They have shoes for every workout, whether your jam is walking or cross training, hiking, or you just like to rock comfortable sneakers for cushion and support on a daily basis. The fit is just incredible. I also love the fact that they're the only athletic shoe brand that's solely dedicated to women and made by women for women since 1987. Rikas really are a must for when you're working on staying fit and becoming your best, most powerful self, which I know you are. Get yourself a pair of Rika today over at Rika.com and use my code Patrice15 to save 15% on your order. That's Rika.com and use the code Patrice15 to save 15% on your order. You can thank me later. She is looking at me, y'all, like, girl, I asked you about dating. First of all, this is my podcast. Now, (laughs) 
<laughs> it's okay. so wild. Just worthiness is huge. It is. Oh my gosh. And in, in, in dating, in, you know, all of it, in marriages, in friendships, in friendships, in all kinds of relationships. Yeah. In everything, in every type of relationship, partnership. But I will say this. I believe that my self-worth increasing over these last several years truly positioned me to call in the most genuine, authentic love I've ever experienced. Because I know that there's no performance from me. I know that I'm not romanticizing anything. I know that I'm not trying to just create something. I'm very comfortable with me. So I don't need to tolerate anything that doesn't feel good to be in relationship. I don't need to put up with anything. I don't need to settle for anything because I am worthy as single Patrice or partner Patrice. You know, like I don't equate my self-worth to being in relationship in that way or being in romantic partnership. And I think that this has really, really been good because I didn't go about dating like, are you my husband? Are you my husband? Are you my husband? I went about dating just like with the intention of, I want to collect data, learn more about myself and learn more about the male species now (laughs) because I have been with the same person for so long. And so going out into the dating world was not about self-confidence. It was a journey of self-worth. Like I am worthy of calling in the type of love that I desire. And I did a whole podcast episode, Jamie, called I Won't Dumb Down My Desires. Because as I started to get more clear about who I am, what I want, what I desire in relationship, I shared bits and pieces on someone else's podcast. And there were a few clips that went viral. And I ended up with all these men in the comments and in the DMs, like, who do you think you are? You're over 40. You're washed up. You're like a single mom trying to make that. I'm like, first of all, my daughter has a father who's a great co-parent. So like, I don't feel that struggle or tension that you're trying to equate to that for whatever reason. All of these things. And I did an episode. I won't dumb down my desires. I'm not, I feel fully worthy over 40 with a child, a divorcee, a Black woman, like anything that you think you can say to make me feel like I don't deserve what I say I desire. Shame on you because it's not working at all. And I'm so grateful because had I not built up my own self-worth and felt really confident that I am worthy regardless, those types of outside comments and the noise and all of that really could have made me retreat. And had I retreated, I wouldn't have finally downloaded the app and I wouldn't have finally met my guy who I've now been with for several months, who is lovely and who treats me amazingly, fantastically, phenomenally. I feel more loved literally than I ever have in my life. And that's no exaggeration. Like I feel more loved than I ever have. And I'm so glad that a part of things that I affirmed was that I was worthy of this type of love. So when I found it, I could recognize it. It is literally the one thing. We cannot out-succeed our self-worth in any area. And for a lot of people listening, this is big in friendships too. And we think, oh, we can just please everyone else and then I'll feel love. We especially, and this is me most of my life, like I felt like, oh, when we have low self-worth, we confuse approval with love and validation with worthiness and significance with success. And This shows up in friendships for a lot of people. And at the end of the day, when you look at the data, right? Because especially for women, we've often been taught like, oh, you're successful if you please everyone else. And, you know, all the things you're accepted and you belong if you please everyone else and make everyone else happy. And that's some measure of success. And while I certainly love making other people happy, I I love doing that. The data shows that does not affect how much you love yourself uh, and and that the depth, the depth of love, of, of authentic love and connection in any relationship, whether it's romantic or it's our friendship, our circle of friends, whatever, whatever it is, the depth of love and connection with someone else cannot be any stronger than the depth of love 
and connection we have with ourselves. And this journey just transforms everything because a lot of us sit around thinking, oh, I just need to find a better guy or I need to find a better circle of friends. And in some cases, that's true, but we will keep repeating the exact same pattern. We will keep finding ourselves, and I did this most of my life, back dating the same kind of person, just dressed differently, sometimes the same cologne. Like, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and we keep over and over and over or attracting the same kind of friends that let us down, that don't keep their word, that don't have our backs. Like, we will keep attracting the amount of love around us as we have for us inside of us. And so doing that work inside, it's just, and, and we've also been taught this lie. Like that's the thing, part of why I wrote Worthy, there's, there's the 20 tools on building self-worth, but there's the entire section on, on the lies. all the lies. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and unlearning these lies that lead to self-doubt and then embracing these truths that wake up worthiness is huge. But we so often just believe this, this lie that if I make everyone else happy and please everyone else, then I'll be enough. Or we believe the lie, self-love is selfish. Like if I'm just going to focus on loving myself or building love for myself, people right now at this moment in time, 2024, people still think, especially, especially well-intended friends, family, loved ones who aren't even aware of this stuff, haven't done the work themselves, they so often think, oh, you're on a self-love journey. They think like, oh, she's getting in into herself. She's like self-absorbed. She like that kind of thing. They don't get it. And so it's so important to know like, oh, wait, if, if we want to really build true friendships and we, we attract the same amount of love that we love ourselves. And so it's, it just comes out in every single area. And I know you and I talked about this a little bit last time we were in person together, that it really does start to, when you start to love yourself more and truer for who you authentically are, irregardless of anyone else's judgment or anything else, it can shift how you see the friends around you. And it can shift your awareness of the impact of where they're at on their own journeys on you. And it just kind of... um it's such a, it's such a growth thing. And I've found that I thought Patrice like, oh, this is it achievement and this and that and whatever. And there were moments even after achieving so much where I still sabotage stuff and had to kind of learn the hard way. Oh, wow. I have a lot of self-confidence, but underneath it all, I don't have self-worth. And that's why I can have all of this business success or all of this contribution success to the world, you know, helping others, serving others, impacting others, having great success in all these areas. But then underneath it all, I don't feel I'm enough. I feel like something's missing. And I've kind of learned the hard way. Like this is that one thing, the self-worth, man, I'm telling you, it's, it's literally the one thing that transforms your life. And the most beautiful part about this that I love so much is that everyone, like, Every person listening, we are born fully worthy. So I do not care what you've done in your past, how many people you've hurt, your past mistakes, your regrets, how many times you've been rejected or failed. None of that is relevant to how worthy you are. I don't care how much you've succeeded, how much you've impacted and and all these things and the world's definition of success you have, none of that impacts how worthy you are. And the beautiful thing is that everyone listening right now is right now at this moment, fully worthy. And there's nothing you have to do different or build or all the things to try and get worthy. You are fully worthy and no one can give it to you. So it really is a journey of unlearning those lies that have led so many of us to believe we're not worthy. And then they impact every area of our life. So it's, um, it's, I'm so passionate about this because it is every person listening right now. And it's the journey of, of learning to believe it and know it that's, that transforms your whole life. Oh, I love that. I That is definitely our affirmation for this episode. I am fully worthy. Like right now, I am fully worthy. 
Oh my gosh, friend, I could talk to you forever. For this month in the Redefining Wealth Institute, our theme has been stop people pleasing. And if you are not in the Redefining Wealth Institute, you need to come on over because we're going to be dissecting the steps that Jamie lays out in Worthy. So you need to grab a copy of Worthy and join me because we're going to be dissecting uh, the nine steps to help you stop people pleasing, such as learning to listen to your inner voice, committing to speaking your truth, which you know, which you know I always talk about, practicing saying no. I'm not going to give them all away because you need to get worthy. You need to grab your copy today. It just came out 48 hours ago. Jamie, I know you always do something amazing around your book launch. So are there any goodies that people can also still get? We're just we're just a few days out from launch. So for Worthy when it's launching, which I'm so excited. Yeah, for anyone who goes to worthybook.com, there is lots of free gifts just for grabbing your copy anywhere books are sold. And this is a book, Patrice, that, oh my gosh, you are going to make so many notes in, highlight so many things. And, you know, I'm donating a hundred percent of the proceeds from the book. Like this is just truly my life's greatest work because I feel had I not learned to be on this journey of truly knowing I'm enough, I could have never arrived at this place of still, I mean, I am working harder than ever, but it's really the first time in my life I'm actually enjoying it. I'm actually feeling like I'm enough, irregardless of the outcome of anything I do. And so I'm just really passionate. I even put a library card, like old school library card in this book at the very end, because my hope and prayer and vision is when you get done with your book, you literally write your name in it and and write someone else's name and and give your book to Uh... another person, another woman, someone who you know, oh my gosh, they are freaking amazing. And if they just learn how to believe it themselves, their relationships would change, generational cycles would be broken, their ideas would be birthed and shared with the world, their art, their talent, they'd put it out there because they believe they're worthy of it. So my hope is for everyone who gets their own book that they then give their book to another person. And if you have made so many notes in it that you don't want to give it to anyone else, you can still write their name on your library card if you gift them a book. But it is just, yeah, it is like literally 20 tools that you can apply to your life right now. Um, And there's a chapter in there called One of the Lies. The chapter is called, I Need to Please Them to Love Me. Well, I had that. You know, I had that. That was my chapter. That was in my bag with that chapter. And I love even that you started that chapter with the Paulo Coelho quote, if you live to please others, everyone will love you except yourself. And... That is so true because I really do that believe that people pleasing lives us to live inauthentically. And if we're living inauthentically, there's no way for us to redefine wealth for ourselves because we're still attached to other people's definitions of wealth and success and all the things. As we close out, Jamie, I want to go to our redefining wealth rapid wisdom questions. Maybe you remember from last time, people always change them, but You're going to just give me the first thing that comes to mind. Um, How do you define success? I'm going to take Oprah's definition for this because it is the best I've ever heard is, is living the highest, truest expression of who you know you're born to be and who you're called by your creator to be. And we always know when we are in that space right? Because like you and I were talking earlier about how it just tastes like freedom, like when we're in alignment you know, with who we're born to be, with who we authentically are. So I think that definition is just so true. Love it. And how do you define wealth in three words or less? God use me. Jamie, do you know that was my prayer every day for a year? Mm -hmm. Just those three words every day. I said that for a year before entering this space. This was like a day over a decade ago. I love that, friend. You gave me chills. Okay. What's one book that has redefined how you see wealth? You know, I'm going to have to say worthy right now <laughs> because <laughs> I, I'm i serious. I, I'm serious. Um, I'm serious. I'm not even just saying that. Uh, I just know it's the one thing because I believe the lies for so many years. And and you know the story. I, I dreamt my whole life of meeting Oprah 40 years later, finally did, had lunch with her at her house. It went for three hours. 
And at the end of it, she gave me her cell number and said, call me anytime. And at that moment, I had so much self-confidence in my life and I didn't call her for four years and I didn't know why. Until four years later, I realized, oh, I actually have a lot of self-confidence, but deep down inside, I didn't believe I was worthy of being her friend. And when we don't think we are worthy of things, we will sabotage them like I did in that situation. We'll hold back. And and that was like the moment I learned. I literally picked up the phone that day and called her the day I realized that. And it changed the whole course of my destiny, my friendship with her, all of it. And but But it's been in so many other areas of my life. And so for me, it's just that one thing that changes everything. So I have to say worthy. Mm. I'm so glad you told that story because I had it in my notes, but we didn't get to it. Uh, yeah, that that gives me chills, friend. Yeah. I feel like we need a part two because I want to like go down the rabbit hole. But OK, uh, <laughs> last one. Fill in the blank. My name is and for me, the truth about wealth is. My name is Jamie Kern Lima. And for me, the definition of wealth is living in alignment with your assignment, with who you are created to be with who you're born to be, not with who anyone else wants you to be. Because when you feel that alignment, it tastes like freedom. And it's really how how we are not doubting ourselves out of our own destiny and instead living out the calling on our life. Uh, I love it. I love it. I am so excited about Worthy. I know it's going to be a blessing to not just thousands, but millions of people. You have outdone yourself yet again, friend. And if you have not already pre-ordered your copy, then you need to go get your copy or get another copy. Go to worthybook.com so you can get some access to all of the goodies that Jamie has for everyone who is supporting this week during the launch. It's worthybook.com. If you're in the Redefining Wealth Institute, we will be going through Worthy Book. I'm so excited. We are actually launching our book club within the Institute and we have a leader there who's going to walk with you and talk with you through some of these chapters. And because this was our month to stop people pleasing, I'm going to be sharing from the nine steps that Jamie lays out in the Worthy Book so we can stop people pleasing. And it starts with small steps and we're going to discuss it. So make sure that you are in the Institute for Redefining Wealth. You can download the Redefining Wealth app and learn more to join us. And Purpose Chasers, I hope that you are so blessed by this episode. Remember, there is no wealth building without you understanding that first and foremost, you are fully worthy just because you're here, just because you were born with purpose, on purpose, for purpose, you were created for purpose, and everything that you desire is really deeply connected to you knowing that you are first and foremost just worthy of it. So, Jamie, thank you for being here, friend. Love you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I love you too. This was so good. And for everyone else, I will be back next week with another episode of Redefining Wealth. Until next time, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and keep earning more without feeling like you have to chase money. We'll talk to you later. Bye.